Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan from Boredom Sated, and what we're going to talk about today is a continuation of the Artificer Armorer build multiclass that I talked about in a previous video. It's not really a continuation, it's an alternate version of the build. Um, the first version of the build was the melee version of the build, which does some pretty effective stuff. The ranged version of the build is what we're going to talk about now. It uses different character classes. And honestly, I think it's actually more fun, more, more fun to play. So we're first starting off with, again, 10 levels of Artificer. Why are we doing 10 levels of Artificer? We're doing that because, again, we want Magic Item Adept um, for uh, the ability to get an additional item that we can attune to. Uh, and you can now craft items with rarity of common or uncommon. Takes a quarter of the time. Usual, real cool, fun stuff. Uh, obviously, the other reason is because in Artificer at level 9, we get armor modifications, which allows us, again, to have two more infusions on our armor, which is really great. If you weren't here for the first video, um, uh, the, armor uh, the purpose of going armor is first you get Arcane Armor at level 3, which basically allows you to use any armor type you want, so you're, there's no reason not to use full plate. Uh, if the armor normally has a strength requirement, it doesn't have the strength requirement. You can use it as your spellcasting focus, so you don't have to specifically carry anything else. And the armor attaches to you and cannot be removed against your will. It also expands to cover your body, although you can retract or deploy the helmet as a bonus action. It replaces any missing limbs, which is also very cool and something you can use for your backstory. Uh, also at level 3, you get to choose your armor model. Now, in this build, we're going to go with the Infiltrator armor, armor model. What this does is, at first, it gives you a Lightning Launcher. A gem-like note appears in one of your armored fists or on your chest. Your choice. It counts as a simple ranged weapon with a normal range of 90 and a long range of 300. It deals 1d6 lightning damage on a hit, and on each one of your turns, uh, you may deal an extra 1d6 lightning damage to that target. You also get an additional 5 feet of movement base because of powered steps. And you have something called Dampening Field, which means you have advantage on dexterity uh, stealth checks. Now, the, nor normally this would impose disadvantage on us uh, because we're wearing full plate. This makes it so we cancel each other out and we don't have disadvantage on our stealth checks. So we are very stealthy in our full plate. At level 5, we're still getting our extra attack. We've already talked about armor modifications. Um, for base Artificer, we're also getting first through third level spells. Uh, there's a lot of spells in Artificer that are kind of pretty, that are pretty good, but nothing really, really great. Uh, you do get spe uh, special tool uh, tool specializations. You also are going to get double uh, specialization with tools um, because of one of the Artificer basic abilities, which is the right tool for the job. Um, you can also choose to have double uh, proficiency at yeah, tool expertise at level six. You get uh, proficiency is doubled with any ability check that uses your proficiency with a tool, which is, again, very cool. Uh, Flash of Genius, you can um, still, when another creature you can see within 30 feet makes an ability check, when you or another creature makes an ability check or a saving throw, you can use a reaction to add your intelligence modifier to the roll. Uh, and one thing I did forget to mention was also um, with the armor, the armor model specifically allows you to use your intelligence modifier instead of strength or dex for your attack and damage rolls. So this entire build is based on intelligence. Uh, now, I didn't want to go with the same race I went with for the first build, so I decided this time to go with human. Human gets plus one to all stats, so you can start with a 16 intelligence that way. Or if you want to, you can, and your GM allows it, you can go into the uh, the variant human, which gets you plus one to two stats, which is going to be intelligence and what other other stat you want based on your stat rolls and how you feel like doing it um, because of the multi-classing. But the main thing that needs to be mentioned about that is the fact that uh, if you go with the variant human, you can start with a feat, and the feat we would generally go with here is going to be sharpshooter. In general, when I looked over feats for this build, Sharpshooter is the only one that comes out as a really like, yeah, we're going to take that, which means that we don't care as much about stat modifications in this build other than to get our intelligence up to 20. 
So we can start with a 15 plus one for human, use two stat mods to get us to 20, and then use a third stat mod for the sharpshooter. But if you go variant human, then you don't even need the third stat modifier to get us to human, and you can use your third stat modifier for whatever you want. Um, and we'll go into the idea of how many stat modifiers you get based on what version of this build you end up taking. So uh, the other thing, of course, that needs to be mentioned is the infusions. Uh, there's several infusions you will get. You will get up to eight known infusions by the time you're level 10 in this class, and you can use four, but really, because we're in armor, we can use six, as long as at least two of them are specifically on the armor. So because we're going to have at least two that are specifically on the armor, we can have enhanced defense on our armor class to give us plus two to the AC. And the one that I like the most also is to give yourself... Um, the boots, um, the winged boots, because winged boots basically give us several hours of flight. And I like the idea that this is basically an Iron Man build, so I'm thinking of that winged boots is giving us flight, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there's lots of other options you have for your, uh, uh, for your artificer infusions. Uh, the other ones that I would definitely take would be to, depending on how magic heavy your game is, uh, enhanced weapon gives it makes it so you have a plus two to hit and damage on your weapon. I generally assume that your GM is having very low magic games, so the enhanced weapon is very strong. And also very important for this build is the repulsion shield. Uh, repulsion shield is a plus one AC to the shield you're using, and also when holding the shield, you can use a reaction immediately after being hit by a melee attack to expend one use of the shield and push the attacker 15 feet away. This is a ranged build. You don't want people standing next to you, so you can push them away very easily by doing this. So, uh, we've got ourselves a plus two armor class from that, plus one armor class on a shield. There's no reason for us not to be using a shield. Uh, so, right now, we have an AC at t with 10 levels of Artificer of 23. Now, let's start multiclassing. The first class I want to multiclass into is Fire. Why am I multiclassing into Fighter? Uh, there's three reasons. First is going to be Action Surge, because Action Surge is amazing. Second, Martial Archetype. Uh, we can either do plus two to hit with our ranged attacks or plus one to our defense. The reason why I say either or is something we will talk about in a minute. Uh, and third is the archetype that we're going to be taking. And in this case, we're going to be going into the Psy Warrior. The Psy Warrior is from Tasha's Cauldron of Power. And why are we going into the Psy Warrior? Because of Psionic Strike. So, at third level, you get a number of Psionic Energy Dies. Uh, an energy Dice. Each die, uh, one is a D6 to start. We're not going to get to a higher die type, so it's going to be D6. The number of these dice that you get per day is, uh, per, per, until you take a long rest, is twice your proficiency modifier. So at level 20, you will obviously have 12 of them. Um, and we've got a couple of really cool abilities we can use with it. But the main one that we want to use is Psionic Strike. You can propel your weapons with Psionic Force once on each of your turns, immediately after you hit a target within 30 feet of you. So you have to be a little close. But you, it does not say melee weapon. Um, you can make an, when you make an attack and deal damage to it with a weapon, you can expend a psionic energy die and roll it and deal force damage equal to the number rolled plus your intelligence modifier. So guess what? Once per turn, we can do double intelligence modifier damage plus the electricity, plus the extra die of electricity, plus a little bit of force. So... Now we've gotten to the point where we can do um, double intelligence modifier damage, which is just fantastic. The other really cool ability you get as a Psy Warrior is Protective Field. When you or another creature you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use a reaction to expend a psionic die, roll the die, and reduce damage taken by the die roll plus your intelligence modifier. Again, very cool. So, that gets us three levels of fighter. Next, we're going to be going into Ranger. Ranger is the reason why we didn't care which fighting style we took, because we can now take the other one. So, we have both archery fighting style and defense armor fighting style, which means our AC is up to 24. 24 AC is not huge, huge, but it's still very, very high. 
So why are we going into Ranger other than for the fighting style? First, Favored Foe, which is the alternate option of Favored Enemy that was put in Tasha's, is great. Uh, when you hit a creature with an attack roll, you can call on your Mystic Bond with Nature to mark the target as your favorite enemy for one minute or until you lose concentration. Remember the wording, as if you were concentrating on a spell. It is not concentration, it's as if concentration. So you can still concentrate on one. Um, if we go up to six levels in this, uh, in this, we will do a D6 damage. When you start, you start at D4 additional damage per attack. This is on all attacks, which is, again, fantastic. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per day. Um, so we're going to be going six levels in this class, probably. Uh, and the six levels in this class make it so the favorite foe damage bonus will be a D6. We're also going to get Deft Explorer. Deft Explorer does a couple of things. We do this, again, instead of Natural Explorer because it's just better. <laughs> Um, so Deft Explorer first gives you one skill proficiency that you count, to the, your proficiency is count as double for any ability check you make using the chosen skill. Um, also, you can speak, read, and let write two additional languages. You also are going to be getting up to level six in this, so your walking speed is increased by five again. So remember, we now have two walking speed increases by five, and you gain a climbing speed and swimming speed equal to your walking speed, which means... If we've gotten all of the things we want here, we now have a walking speed of plus 10, a climbing speed with plus 10, a swimming speed of plus 10, and winged boots. So we can do all of the things. So, which version of Ranger do we go into for this build? The version of Ranger that I decided to go into for this build is the Hunter. The basic one, the first one from the player's handbook. Why this one? So first of all, Colossus Slayer is pretty strong. Uh, as long as the person, that, uh, the creature that you've hit uh, with a weapon attack has already is below its maximum hit points, it takes an additional D8 damage. You can only do it once per turn. Since we have two attacks, um, even if you're hitting a, a creature for the first time with your first attack, you'll do the additional D8 with your second, which is really not that bad. Uh, the second ability you don't really want to use very much, but the third one called Horde Breaker is great. Once on each of your terms, when you make a weapon attack, you can make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature that is within five feet of the original target. Now, you won't get your Hunter's Prey bonus to it. You won't get your, uh, you won't get the Hunter's Prey bonus to it. You're probably going to cast Hunter's Mark. You're not going to get the Hunter's Mark bonus damage to it. But you can still just get an extra free attack to do a little bit of damage to a, that extra target. And that is always cool. Uh, now, the other thing that needs to be mentioned, of course, is we're going to be going six, since we're going six levels in Ranger, we're going to have first and second level Ranger spells, which is always nice. Um, so we've got a lot of fun choices that we can have for first and second level Ranger spells. We've got a lot of choices for the first, second, and third level Artificer spells. Um, I'm not really going to go into those choices because it's kind of up to you and none of them are really overpowering. Uh, again, you're probably going to want to use Hunter's Mark because, again, the Hunter's Mark stacks with your uh, favored enemy version because it's it's concentration and as if concentration. So against your target, that's an additional 2d6 damage on all of your attacks. So now we get to the hard part. We've got 10 levels of Artificer. We've got three levels of Fighter. We've got six levels of Ranger. That's 19 levels. We've got a 20th level to play around with. I have three options for you. First option is the least fun, but it can be useful depending on what you want to do, which is going to fourth level of fighter. Why go into a fourth level fighter? The only reason to go into a fourth level of fighter is it gets you a fourth stat boost. You might need the fourth stat boost depending on how you're playing. There's all sorts of reasons why you might need that. Um, mostly for this build, you need to have 13s and several stats to be able to multi-class, so you might need it for that. But really, it's intelligence and everything else can kind of just be a middling stat, and it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So you can go into Fighter for that fourth stat boost. You can take another feat if you want to. You know, you can play around with that as with however you wish, based on your play style and things like that. Second option, you take 7th level in Ranger. What does 7th seventh, seventh level in Ranger do? 7th level in Ranger gets you Defensive Tactics. Um, defensive tactics gives you one of three abilities, either, 
uh, opportunity attacks against you are made with disadvantage, which is great because you can just use your movement to walk away or fly away. Two, multi-attack defense. When a creature hits you with an attack, you can gain a plus four AC against all subsequent attacks made by that creature for the rest of the turn. So if you're fighting a big bad and it really, really wants to beat you up, it hits you once with your AC of 24, and then you have an AC of 28 for the rest of the turn, so it probably doesn't hit you as easily. The problem is it doesn't stop that first attack from hitting, uh, and... It, it only works against that one creature, so it's okay. Third option, Steel Wall. Will, you have an advantage. You have advantage on all saving throws against being frightened. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. Here is your third option. It's the goofiest option and probably the most fun. You take level 20 and you go into Sorcerer. Why Sorcerer, you say? Well, Sorcerer is one of the two classes in this game that you actually get to choose your basic, your bonus, your, your thing, at level 1 instead of at level 3. You choose your subtype at level 1, which means you get abilities at level 1. Now, why go into Sorcerer in the first place? Two first-level spell slots, cast shield, 29 AC, yay, lol. Why, what ver version of Sorcerer to go into is the bigger question. And the Sorcerer Pro version that I've decided to go into is Divine Soul. What Divine Soul gets you is, first of all, you have a larger spell list, which doesn't really help you because you're only getting two first level spells. But you can choose your affinity. And one of the affinity choices you can have if you go lawful is Bless. So if you don't want to use Hunter's Mark, you can Bless you and your other players as well to get that extra D4 to hit. The other thing, and this is actually the much cooler one, is, is called Favored by the Gods. Divine power guards your destiny. If you fail a saving throw or miss with an attack roll, you can roll 2d4 and add it to the total, possibly changing the outcome. So it's after the roll, but before you know whether you hit or, fit, hit or miss, depending again on how your, play, how your, your GM roll, rules that, but it's either way, it's after you fail, you can add 2d4 to possibly succeed. You can only use this once. Um, in, you can use this once after you finish a short or long rest, which is fantastic. But one extra auto hit, or one extra one extra hit, or one extra past saving throw can be the difference between life and death in a lot of cases. So that's just really, really cool. So. This version does go into four classes if you want to. You do need a lot of stats at 13 in order to do that, since for Fighter and Ranger, you need several stats to be able to be up there, and then for Sorcerer, you need to go into Charisma. But you only need 13s. It's doable, especially if you go into the Artificer Infusions. You can give yourself a 19 strength to be able to get around that, so you can go into the other stuff easier. So... I've given you a lot of information, but how much damage do we actually do on some of these attacks? So, remember, you get two attacks per round. Uh, if you aren't using Sharpshooter, we're going to have a plus 15 to our attack roll at max level, because 5 for Intelligence Modifier, plus 2 Weapon, because you can automatically make it a plus 2 Weapon, um, plus 6 from your Proficiency Modifier, and plus two because of the fact that we're using um, a fighting style to increase it all the way up to a plus 15, which is pretty fantastic. Damage. Uh, your base damage is going to be a D6 plus your intelligence modifier, but once per round you can add a D6 to electricity. You can favorite enemy something for another D6. You can put a uh, mark on a target for another D6. You can use your... Um, Psy Warrior ability for a D6 plus your intelligence modifier and if it's already below max damage you add a D8 for Colossus Slayer. Now several of these only work on one attack at a time and several of them only work on a marked target. However, if all of them are going off at the same time we're looking at 2D6 of electricity 1D6 of force damage uh, plus intelligence modifier your intelligence modifier also goes of course onto the main uh, plus two for that, so we're now at uh, right there. We're at three d six plus twelve. Then we get to add we get to add two more dice for uh, favored enemy and hunter's mark. So we're now up to five d six 
uh, plus 12 because, again, the electrics, extra electricity. And then we've got Colossus Slayer to add on a D8. So once per round, pretty consistently, we should be able to hit something for 5D6 plus 1D8 plus 12. And you can add in um, Sharpshooter if you really want to and feel confident with it to make it instead 5D6 plus 1D8 plus 22. Your other attack of the round is going to do a lot less damage because you're not adding the other bonuses. But if you're attacking this as your main target, you still get the D6 from Hunter's Mark and you still get the D6 from Favored Foe. Which means that you're still going to be doing 3D6 plus 7 as your base damage. And that's not terrible considering. So, uh, of course, you also have the option to attack you know, make an attack action again because we've got fighter levels and all sorts of other fun stuff that are going into it. Uh, I will make a character sheet using the silliest version of this, which is going to include the sorcerer, uh, which will be available for this video. Um, so it will be, again, pretty goofy. I've given you guys a lot of choices. I'm not going to go into specific spells because you're going to take what you're going to take, and it's really your opinion, not necessarily mine, with how you're going to do that. But our AC is very high, our abilities are very high, our damage is definitely solid and consistent, and our AC is very high and can get higher if you do the Sorcerer part of the build. So, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something that you would change. I did a lot of looking at other classes to be able to play around with it. I thought about Wizard, decided against it. Um, if you like the build, like if you want to see more stuff like this, give me some suggestions. I will try to build anything that anyone really suggests and see how things go with it. Uh, please like, please subscribe if you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you next time. And I hope everyone had a good day.